Welcome to the Special Education Inner Circle Podcast. I'm your host, Katherine Witcher. If you sit at an IEP table, you belong here. For over 25 years, I've been helping parents, teachers, admins, and therapists build IEPs that work in the real world, and I can't wait to help you. Let's dive in. Have you ever walked into an IEP meeting? You'll look around the room and you realize there's somebody sitting there that you've never met before. Now there's two levels of strangers at the IEP table and neither one of these situations should happen. And it's happened to most special education teachers and parents. So there's the kind of stranger at the IEP table that nobody knew that they were coming except for the person who said, hey, I think you should come to this meeting. Like they weren't on the meeting invite. That's a huge problem in a big way, as in the meeting invite that's sent home to the parents should definitely have everybody who's coming to the IEP meeting listed on there. There's also this level of stranger at the table where you don't know who they are because you've never met them in person. A lot of times this happens when we have a speech therapist, occupational therapist, maybe a psychologist, somebody who's at the table that nobody's met face to face. This is a huge problem. I was actually reminded of this. This is part of the Master IEP Coach Certificate Program. So the Master IEP Coach Certificate Program is for parents, teachers, admins, and therapists who really want to level up their leadership at the IEP table. I'll make sure the link is below this video. And at the end of the certificate program, I ask you know, what is something that you're going to do differently at the IEP table after taking this certificate program? And we just had somebody complete and send in their form. And I read every one of them. And she says, I'm going to make sure that there's no strangers at the IEP table. And I'm like, yes, yes, let's do this. You know, we are at the IEP table are expected to work together and make some of the toughest decisions ever. That's what it feels like. Some of the toughest decisions ever for a child's future. Our job is to make sure that we are preparing a child for further education, employment, independent living. That's what ideal law says. Remember, I'm not a lawyer. I show you where to look. I've been doing this for 25 years and I have helped parents through tremendous kind of decision-making situations And oftentimes I was brought in because they didn't know everybody who was going to be at the IEP table. So they feel like they needed somebody else there. That shouldn't happen. Yes, bringing somebody with you is is an amazing thing for parents to do. That's exactly why we have master IEP coaches who can come along the side with parents and make sure that things like this don't happen. But you as teachers, if you're listening, you can make sure that this doesn't happen. And here's the thing. I'm very well aware. I'm a former teacher. I'm a special needs sibling, right? My brother has Down syndrome, so I experienced the special education system from the perspective of family. And then I became a teacher and I experienced the IEP table that way. In all ways, there have been surprises at the IEP table of who is sitting there. With the way that our world works today with technology, it is absolutely not necessary for a parent or any other team member to walk in and not know Who is this at the IEP table? I mean, we've got FaceTime, we've got Zoom, we've got Google Meets, like like pick your your way that that you wanna make an introduction, but to be expected to come to an IEP table and work together, and let's talk about some things because this this is gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Unless you you are taking the exact steps to make sure that this doesn't happen, and even when you do, Sometimes it still happens. You can be the best prepared person at the IEP table where you follow some of the things that I'm going to give you here, what you can do to help make sure that this doesn't happen. Okay. You can, you can do the best. And then just sometimes it happens. So a couple of things, whether you have a stranger that you didn't know they were going to be there at all, or there's a stranger at the table, like you can't put a face to a name because you've never met them in person. It's important for you to feel clear about not only who is at the table, but what is their role? So sometimes somebody comes in like a psychologist and you're like, I could assume what their role is, but it's not always the same. You know, sometimes there's going to be extra testing that's going to be recommended. And that's why the psychologist is there. Sometimes there's going to be a placement change recommended. That's why the psychologist is there. Sometimes there's just some changes that are happening that, you know, the team felt that the psychologist would be a great, you know, addition to. But this happens, again, all different roles. 
I'm just kind of picking on psychologists because it happens a lot that all of a sudden a psychologist shows up to the meeting and parents are kind of blindsided. Sometimes teachers don't even know that this is going to happen. So parents just know that sometimes what I'm describing for you, this is happening to the teachers too, but teachers don't say anything out loud because then you feel like you don't know what's happening at the IEP table and you don't want to let anybody else know. Okay. So everybody kind of stays quiet. So it really does take at the IEP meeting, it's going to take parents to speak up or teachers. If you know that this is happening to the parent, be the parent's voice and say, you know what? I don't think that Mrs. Smith is aware of who, you know, Dr. Jones is at the table. Could we please make introductions? And I mean, introductions more than just going around the table. You know, this is who I am. This is what I do. No, like what's your role at the IEP meeting? So if this ever happens, you need to know what is the role? Like, what is the desired outcome? Why is this person here? What's going on? So, you know what? I was sometimes that surprise person. Sometimes when I asked my clients to make sure that the team knew that I was coming to the IEP meeting, they didn't always follow through on that. Sometimes I was a surprise person. I was absolutely as transparent as possible. Hi, my name is Catherine. I've been working with the family, helping them navigate the IEP process and making sure that they understand that everything, uh, what, you know, what everything is um, during this IEP process. So my job today really here coming with the parent is to make sure that they fully understand everything that's happening at the IEP table and help them get any questions answered. Oh, okay. All right. So now everybody knew like, why was I sitting at the IEP table? I was there almost as a translator of being like, okay, this is what the school team is saying, you know, based on the concerns that we've talked about before, you know, Mrs. Smith, the team is saying that they'll address these by this way and, and really helping bring together the, the communication, bridge some of the communication gaps that happens during the IEP meeting. So if this ever happens to you, one, I want you to stand up and make sure that you know why the person is there. That's going to allow you to be the best person at the IEP table in your role is that you know, you know who is there and, and what is the role. Now, here's the thing. If we're going to stay focused during this meeting and work together, if this person is a surprise person, they most likely have some information that not everybody at the IEP table knows. So it's important if you are a parent and this happens to you, that you make sure that you're saying, you know what, I'm, I, I, I appreciate this information. However, this is the first time that I'm seeing it. Therefore, I'm going to need some time to think about this. Don't ever feel like you have to make snap decisions just because somebody showed up at the IEP meeting and gave a bunch of information. It's really important for us to make sure that this doesn't happen. So there, there was a couple strategies if it does happen right? We need to make sure that we're not making any snap decisions based on new information at the table just because there's a new person there. We need to make sure that we have a documented of why they're there, who invited them, what their role is. And I want you guys to do some prep work ahead of time. Parents, if you think that there's going to be people there that you have never seen face-to-face, -face, like even if it's just the speech therapist that works with your child every week and you've never met them, you don't know what they look like, and you want to have a quick Zoom or a quick FaceTime, just, you know, hey, I don't want our first meeting to be at the IEP meeting, we've got so much to get done. So can we just spend 15 minutes talking ahead of time? Can we just get to know each other <laughs> before we walk in? Can we do our parent-teacher conference? Can we do our um, progress notes updates? Can we do something just kind of face-to-face -face so when we walk in the meeting, it's not the first time we meet each other. Now, here's one of the big strategies that I love to share with master IEP coaches. Now, remember, there's two different kind of tracks, paths, to become a master IP coach. One is you want to become a master IP coach because you want to help yourself. You're like, I want to know all the things for my own IEP table. And then there's also master IP coach path, which is a mentorship where I teach you to do what I do. I teach you to help others through the IEP process and get paid for your expertise and get paid for your time to help others. So you can like, no, I just want it all for me. Or yes, I want it all for me. And I want to get paid to help others. I'll put both of those links below. So especially when I'm coaching master IP coaches and how to help themselves and help others. One of the big things that I ask them to do is to make sure that there are these introductions before the meeting and making sure um, that everybody knows everybody. Now I will tell you, here is the fastest way that I've had a teacher who is a master IP coach. Yes, you can do both. You can be employed by a school district and be a master IP coach. In fact, her district highly respects her. She now creates um, kind of like a welcome intro packet for parents and puts all the staff members' pictures 
and says like, this is so-and-so she's your speech therapist. You know, like, this is what she looks like, right? Like, here's the picture, like little bios, little tiny bios. So this way the parent can at least put a face to a name at minimum from paper. Like, oh yeah. Okay. I recognize this person from the intro packet, from this intro letter. And, and it, there's just a little picture. It doesn't take that long. It really doesn't take that long. It's kind of like, you know how parents do an all about me for their kids. A lot of parents do an all about me um, kind of one sheet. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just send me a message. I've got a lot of resources on that, but they do an all about me. They're like, you know, this is my child and here's their picture and here's their likes and dislikes. And they send that to the school. It's kind of the same thing for an IEP team. It's kind of like all about us. Like here are, here's a little mini bio. So that, that can be a game changer. That can be a game changer. So can we just agree? No more strangers at the IEP table. No more strangers at either level. Like the total surprise of like, whoa, who are you? Why are you here? I mean, I'll be honest with you. There's been situations that we've had people show up to an IEP meeting that we've actually had to cancel the IEP meeting because we were that unprepared for who showed up and for the decisions that were going to be put at the IEP table. We're like, nope, no way, no way. This was a huge violation of things, okay? So it's important that you, you don't have a, any layer of kind of stranger at the table. So not the surprise of who is this, and not the, hmm, I've never really met you before, but now we're going to make big decisions about my kids. So I want to make sure that you are taking the steps that are necessary to make sure that this IEP meeting is as collaborative as possible. I'm going to put the two master IEP coach programs that I just talked about. The certificate program is the one that's for you to get all the strategies like this that you can implement for yourself. And then I'll put down the master IEP coach mentorship program, which is where you take everything in. Plus you get the business side of things where you want to be that guide. You want to be that leader. You want to help other people through the IEP process. You want to become a master IEP coach. That's the mentorship. So certificate or mentorship, which one will you choose? I can't wait to work with you and support you on your master IEP coach journey. And don't forget, strangers at the IEP table are not okay. If this gave you some ideas, some strategies, some like, oh yeah, like I, I want this to stop happening. And you know other people that this has happened to, please comment, share, tag them. Every time you pass this along, it helps somebody else get a strategy for their IEP table that truly makes a difference for the child's future and making sure that we are coming together as a team, working together as a team to prepare this child for the future. I'll see you guys next time. Did you know that every time you leave a review or share an episode of the special education inner circle podcast out on social media, it makes a huge difference in helping more parents and teachers get simple special education strategies that can make a difference at their next IEP meeting. Please leave a review, share with a friend, and I'll see you next time.